We're staying on the breaking news. The president just spoke moments ago. We will take you live to a White House press secretary brief briefing with the update on the ISIS suicide bomb attacks in Kabul. More than five dozen killed, a dozen U.S. troops killed, children killed, 150 injured, 15 soldiers wounded as well. Reports of a third blast in Kabul tonight. The Pentagon today warning about the threat is, quote, high right now of even more suicide bombers, including car bombings that the pattern is for multiple attacks. Let's bring in California Congressman Mike Garcia, retired U.S. Army Lieutenant Colonel James Carafano. First to you, Congressman. Reaction now pouring in to the president's remarks. Uh, we're looking at the critics saying he's fatally out of touch, a catastrophic press conference. Let's, let me just tick-tock to you what the president just said moments ago. He avoided accountability and blamed Trump for the disaster in the evacuation crisis in Afghanistan when he is not handcuffed to Trump's deal. The U.K. and NATO are saying that. He's saying it is not a mistake to have the Taliban control the airport. He's indicating Americans may be left behind. He's saying we, uh, he used a scripted statement, a teleprompted statement, and revealed a list of reporters he had to call on. Uh, he's touting the evacuation success in the crisis that Europe, NATO, and the U.K., Democrats say, Republicans say he created. Your take on this press conference? Uh, I'm absolutely infuriated and beside myself. He also said that Bagram Airfield added little value to the situation early on, uh, and he spent uh, an entire 10 seconds, only 10 seconds, to talk about the, the fallen Marines and our soldiers who literally lost their lives because of his mistakes. Look, I'm pissed off, and I, and I want my president, our president, to be just as pissed off as all of us are. And he's living in his own world right now and not looking at the facts and data that's going on, on the ground. He needs to immediately shift to a mindset of a commander in chief rather than a chief diplomat. Yeah, he seemed detached and out of touch and not emotional here, uh, Colonel. Um, it's a sickening attack. Americans are outraged. We've got soldiers' families, Marines' families that are fighting men and women mourning today, and he didn't feel, you didn't feel that emotion from him. Uh, so the operational plans he's talking about to strike ISIS, do you believe him? No, I mean, I think there are a couple of problems. That we're, you know, from a, look, for, from an emotional perspective, I had 25 years in the military, and soldiers and Marines are just part of me, and this, this breaks me like, like nothing I can imagine. But from a detached, you know, military standpoint, problem number one is he says, well, what, we think it's ISIS. They couldn't figure out whether COVID came out of a China lab, but but they know this is ISIS, right? Um, problem number one is how are you going to get them? He keeps saying we're going to go over the horizon. Part of the president's plan was to abandon the entire military footprint in Afghanistan. We have no footprint in South Asia to do counterterrorism and intel against Afghanistan. We're not coming over for the horizon. We're basically coming from the other side of the moon. The other thing is, is look, What's, what's the worst scenario? The Taliban's controlling all the terrorists or the Taliban's not controlling all the terrorists? Because either way, you've taken a relatively stable theater and turned it into a terrorist Disneyland, and you've literally offered zero thinking about how you're going to deal with that. Yeah, we hear you loud and clear. The president also just moments ago quoted, quoted George W. Bush in saying, we will hunt you da down at a time of our choosing. Um, Congressman, let's talk about the fatal mistake to give up and abandon Bagram Air Force Base. If the, Bi if the president had considered today's terror attacks as even a remote possibility, um, isn't it a, uh, as a, a, a plausible scenario, then why give up Bagram Air Base? There, there, there is no rationale that makes sense to give up Bagram Airfield. Uh, look, the bottom line is that he adopted a mindset that the State Department was going to run this negotiation from day one. They made diplomatic choices. Uh, within those trades, apparently there was a decision to let them have Bagram Airfield and all the equipment that was uh, residing there to turn over effectively all the assets and abandon our Afghan partners in the middle of the night. Uh, and effectively allow the Taliban to run uh, rampant throughout the nation and, and painted us into a corner in, in just the city of Kabul and just at the airfield of Kabul, for that matter. This is absolutely the riskiest posture and the riskiest option they could have considered. And again, this is because the bureaucrats yeah. at the State Department were making decisions and coming up with strategies and tactics. And a lot of these folks were the same ones who botched uh, Benghazi in 2012. 
so we're, we're seeing a lot of the same lessons learned here, and he needs to pivot to a commander in chief and start treating this as a military operation. The mission can't be get as many Americans out by 831. It has to be get all Americans out at all costs until we're done with that. Then we can consider uh, leaving Afghanistan and figuring out the next steps. The U.S. soldiers pay the highest sacrifice for the decision to abandon Bagram Air Force Base, where that could have been a, a clearing field, an evacuation base. Uh, it's far easier to secure, Colonel. How do we rescue the 1,000 Americans? By the way, the Secretary of State admitting that that's a rolling number. It's a calculation that they are refining based on ex estimates. They still don't know how many Americans are there. We've got people racing to the borders with Pakistan and right. Iran. Your, your thoughts on that? Right. So, you know, when you plan a military operation, you plan it so as you go along, you open yourself up to more opportunities and you and you limit the enemies. We, we've done exactly the opposite because it was run by the diplomats. As the operations progressed, we've narrowed the options that we have. Look, I think we're going to be out of uh, Kabul airport in a New York minute. They're just going to bug out. And quite honestly, at this point, I don't know if they have any options. It's completely indefensible. So what they will yeah, likely do is they will set up rat lines, all right? They will, they will have the assets that they can piece together. And a lot of these even aren't coming from the U.S. government. They're coming from folks who are just putting this together. They'll do rat lines to get people to Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, uh, uh, you know, maybe Pakistan. The, I tell you, and the Europeans are really worried because very likely what's going to happen is there's going to be a mass exodus. And, and that's probably going to go through Iran and it could well dump into Western Europe, and they they could face another Syria-like mass exodus. And so they're really angry we about what this president has done to them. But we're, we are, people are extremely concerned about the Americans now stranded. The president and the White House press secretary has already admitted Americans may be left behind. We've never been here before in U.S. history in this footing. Let's talk about that. The Pentagon today says the U.S. military does have Apache helicopter gunships and drones at the Kabul airport if they needed to strike back. Uh, but war veterans like Michael Waltz, congressman, say the White House is damaging the rescue effort by putting the military on a footing of aversion that the Biden team appears to be pushing for detente with the Taliban, letting them control the airport. It should be noted that it was Vice President Biden who was criticized for saying to President Barack Obama, go slow, do, do, do not go after Osama bin Laden. Let's listen to the White House press secretary right now. Stick with me, get you guys. Listen to this.